Oh, good. Shocking discovery in Baltimore City Public Schools. A 17-year-old student passes three classes in four years, but is still ranked near the top half of his class. Project Baltimore's Chris Papps joining us live here on Facebook with what is happening at this West Baltimore High School. A lot of attention on this story. Hi, Chris. Yeah, hi, Patrice. We had a, a mother reach out to us a couple of weeks ago. Her 17-year-old son, who's going to be 18 fairly soon, he goes to Augusta Fells Savage Institute of Visual Arts in West Baltimore. And she had reached out to us because he's been going to this school for four years. He was progressing through the grades. She thought that he was a senior and he was going to be graduating in June. She found out in February that he has been moved back to ninth grade and he has to start high school all over again. She gave us her son's transcripts. We can see in these transcripts what has happened over the past four years at Augusta Fells, why this mother is upset and why she reached out to Project Baltimore. What are you seeing in those transcripts? Walk me through some of that. So in this student's four years at Augusta Fells, we can see in his transcripts that he passed three classes in those four years. He has earned two and a half credits. So that is why he's been moved back to ninth grade. Also within the transcripts, we can see that he has a 0 0.13 GPA. And what's getting a lot of attention throughout this story is that it's not it's not just one student that this is happening to. His 0 0.13 GPA in four years gives him a class rank of 62 out of 120, meaning that there are 58 other students just in his grade, and there's four grades in this school, just in his grade there are 58 other students that have a 0 0.13 GPA or lower. Now we can see in his first three years at Augusta Fells, also through his transcripts, that he has been late to school or he has not gone to school about 270 times. And the mother is saying she didn't know any of this because the school never contacted her. And we can see that too, Patrice, in the transcripts. We can see in the first three years, despite him passing three classes and despite him being absent or late about 270 times, through all of that, one teacher requested a parent conference and the mother is saying that that parent conference never happened and there's one more aspect that we need to point to here that that's that's very important is that the mother had been saying to us that she didn't know and part of the reason that she didn't know is because her son was progressing through the grades. Even though he was failing the classes, he was moving on. So through the transcripts, we can see he failed Spanish one, but he was moved on to Spanish two. He failed algebra one, but he was moved on to algebra two. He failed English two, but he was moved on to English three. These are junior and senior level courses. And the mom thought, my son's in English three. My son is in algebra two. So he's doing well. And then she finds out that he's struggling. All right. So this raises so, so many questions. But let's listen. Uh, I, I know we have some sound from the mother. Let, let's hear from her. I'm just trying to fight. He like, Mom, what, what was all this for? What did I do this for? Like, don't he get a chance? Why would he do three more years in school? You, he didn't fail. The school failed him. The school failed at their job. They failed. They failed. That's the problem here. They failed. 
They fail. He didn't deserve that. He's a good kid. Like, he didn't deserve that. Where is the mentors? Where is the help for him? I don't, I hate that this is happening to my child. And obviously, listening to her there, Chris, you, you can see that she's upset. You can see the pain uh, that she's going through over her son. Uh, but there are so many questions and people writing in on, uh, on Facebook where their story is up. Um, it's gotten a, a thousand plus comments from, from people who were moved by the story. But a lot of them uh, are questioning the mom. One, okay, let's see. Let's see one comment here. Uh, it says the the city school system this is comment number one the city school system is horribly broken it needs a complete audit and restructuring with that said the parents are not blameless in this it's a parent's job to know how their child is doing in school she knew he was failing classes but let it continue unfortunately it is the kids who are suffering from this just completely broken system so what is the mom i know you're saying that the mom said he was progressing in classes but does she not see report cards? Does she not know her child was missing 200 plus days of school? What What is she saying about, uh, about that? And not to pile on her because obviously she is upset for her child, but just trying to figure it all out. Yeah, fair question. So you have the mother who is a mother of three, single mom, she has three jobs. In a city like Baltimore, parents like her are depending on the school system to educate their kids because they're trying really hard they have multiple jobs and what is she saying is you should have contacted me three and a half years ago when my son was a freshman missing all of this school you should have contacted me three and a half years ago when he was failing all of his classes if she's not getting contacted which we know she wasn't what concern is she going to have to be proactive when she sees that her son is in English 3, when she sees that her son is in Algebra 2, or when he's in Spanish 2? Would she not have seen, though, a report she didn't, card? She's saying Chris, that she didn't know. Would she not have seen a report card that said he failed Spanish 1, or Algebra 1, or English 1? Yes, but he was promoted on to the, the second ones. There is there is no one place to put this blame. Oh, so absolutely there's three not. there's three aspects here. So you have the the, the, the student. The student missed 270 days. Uh, he was either absent or late in the first three years of school. Uh, we were all 17. We were all 16. We were all 15 years old at one time. And you know, I know how I was. Like I was going to do what I could get away with. Mm -hmm. So if the student isn't going to school, but the students in English three. So then you have the mother, and the mother is saying that she thought he was progressing and that he was a senior and he was going to graduate in June, and now he's all of a sudden been moved back to being a freshman. And I think that the dramatic swing here is really, is really what's it's catching her off guard. It's not like right. he went from 10th grade to 9th grade. He went from 12th grade to 9th grade. Sure. And then you have the school system. And we interviewed an administrator. Let me jump uh, in here real quick. Anonymously. Uh, Chris, let me jump in before you get into the administrator because we want to hear that, but we've had so many more people join in on this Facebook. Can you recap just uh, what has happened and then let's talk about what the administrator says about it. Okay, so we're talking about Augusta Fell Savage Institute uh, of Visual Arts in West Baltimore, where a mother had reached out to us, and she had just learned that her son, who she thought was going to graduate in June and was a, a senior, has been moved back to being a freshman. And she recently learned that in his four years at Augusta Fells in this high school, which is a traditional high school, that he had only earned two and a half credits, had a 0 0.13 GPA, but yet he was ranked 62nd out of his class of 120, meaning he's in the middle of a class, 58 people are behind him, and he has passed three classes in four years. That's the severity of the issue that we're talking about here. In a school that gets almost $6 million a year from taxpayers, this is the education that the students are receiving, where you pass three classes in four years and you're almost in the middle of your class. Okay, I have a question about that, but you spoke with uh, a school administrator about this story. What did they have to say? 
Well, this school administrator was anonymous because they fear retaliation. Nobody from North Avenue, Dr. Sonia Santelisis, who's been there for four years, the entire four years that this mother's son had been at Augusta Fells, she will not sit down with us, nor will she allow any of her cabinet members to sit down with us and explain what happened here. But when we talked to the administrator, he had said that there are there are um, protocols put in place and interventions put in place so this type of thing doesn't happen. And they were not followed by Augusta Fells. If a student is missing so many days of school, if a student is falling behind too far, there, there are these things that are put in place to alert the parent, to alert the student, and to have the school community come together to find a, re a way to get the student to school and to get the student learning. But for th those things started, Patrice, three weeks ago. For the first three and a half years that this kid was in this school, those things were not happening. And that's what the administrator was saying. The school should take the largest blame here because the school is supposed to be there to not allow this to happen, but it did. And the other thing that the administrator said that, that was important, and if you watch the story, he lays out this case, is that Baltimore City is a, is a city we all know that has a lot of murders. It's very violent. Crime is high. There's a lot of poverty. The administrator is saying this type of failure from the city school system is playing a large part in the violence and in the poverty. Um, Chris, I'm going to read another comment um, from someone. Tiffany writes in and says his GPA was uh, 0.13. He was in the middle of his class. Uh, which is alarming to, to, to realize that the school needs to be investigated. Uh, so talk about your, what you hope to get out of this reporting. What would you like to see happen and what can the school do? Because when you, when you talk about this story, the question that came up for me is, did this one student who was ranked 62 in his class, was he the only student that they did not do the follow-up with the parents, did not get him the extra help they, that the, the child needed? Or is that the case for all 58 students under him as well? Are they all in this same boat? Or were they getting help along the way somehow? Sure, let's tackle a few of those questions. So when we reached out to North Avenue and they refused to do an interview about this, they did send us a two-page written statement. Now we have posted that on our website, foxbaltimore.com. Within this two-page statement, City Schools talks about what should have happened over the past three, three and a half years, which would have been automated calls are supposed to go out to parents every time a student has an, has an unexcused absence. For three and a half years, this was supposed to be happening. Mother said she never got one call from the school system. They're supposed to provide these interventions to get kids in class and to get them caught up on their coursework so that they don't go from being a senior to being a freshman and they take smaller step backs, not, not these massive steps backs. Uh, parents are supposed to be sent uh, information in the mail. City schools told us they did a home visit to this mother's house and that the mother had been to the school to talk to the school administrators. She's saying none of that ever happened. And the first time that she found out about this was about three weeks ago when city schools had reached out to us. Now, the most important line in that two-page statement is one line where city schools says that it is reviewing the practices over the last couple of years that led to student outcomes. What that means is that city schools is saying, uh, we're, gonna, we're taking a look at this because we, we kind of need to figure out what's going on here. That's what that line means. That's the line that's gonna keep Project Baltimore going because there is more to this story. Uh, something else to point out, what are we trying to get out of this story? We are shining a light on an injustice. And in America right now, we hear a lot about social injustice and we hear a lot about racial injustice. Well, Fox 45 News, Project Baltimore, we have done our job. We have shined light on an injustice. So what is the leadership of Baltimore City? What is the leadership of Maryland? What is the leadership of the school system? Dr. Sony Santelisis, the school board, what are they gonna do about it? We pointed to this school where hundreds of kids are failing. What are they going to do about it in, a, you know, in 2021 America where we're talking about injustices? This is one right here. This is a school that is almost entirely African-American, and this is a school that I think we can all agree is failing the students 
that are walking into that building. And these students are going back now over the next couple of weeks after you know, being home, being uh, virtual learning for the past year. What's going to happen? We're going to be following this, Patrice. And we got a lot more stories that we have lined up about the money that is going to this school, who is getting paid, other educational metrics of this school, the previous leadership of the school. Where are they? We're going to find them. This, this is this is this is a big onion. We have uncovered a big onion, and we're going to be peeling the layers back over the next couple of weeks. All right, Chris, thank you so much. The story is up on our website, foxbaltimore.com, if you'd like to take a look for yourself.